Hello, I'm Constantin. In this video, we'll be talking about Komonads. When I first discovered the word a long time ago, all I could think of was, ooh, I see monad in this word, except there's a peculiar prefix attached to it. Are Komonads perhaps related to monads? Yes, they are indeed. One is the dual of another. What does that mean? In mathematics, especially in category theory, it is common to add the prefix co to mean dual or opposite. The notion of duality depends on the context and can be defined differently. Sometimes whenever people hear the words category theory, they might get anxious. So it is important to state that we're not going to go in depth about some category theoretical concepts and definitions. Even though Haskell and category theory do share a non-empty connection, this is a Haskell lecture, so we'll try to keep the category theoretical content to a minimum. Let's instead briefly mention one important thing that will be relevant. An introduction of duality with respect to a function f from a to b switches the source and the target. f opposite acts on b and returns the value of the type a. Now let's recall the two relevant functions defined in the monad type class, return and bind. Return lifts an element of the type into a monadic context, and bind transforms ma to mb by applying the function, which is the second argument, to the kind of unwrapped value of the type a. There's actually another essential to the monads function called join that is defined via bind. It reduces one nesting level in the monadic type. Bind can also be defined via join. Moreover, theoretically speaking, join should be a part of the monad type class. Sad fact, it isn't. There exist technical issues with the generalized new type deriving and Haskell's roles system. The link to the relevant wiki article is in the description. The monad laws can be described with Kleisley arrows. A Kleisley arrow is a function from A to B wrapped in some context M, usually a monadic context M. We can define the Kleisley composition whose type signature is strikingly similar to the one of the regular composition. In terms of either bind or join, these laws can be expressed differently in terms of the bind operator if we substitute the definition of the Kleisley composition. Please note that the identity laws in the rightmost column uh, differ from the ones specified in the documentation to the monad type class. They're swapped. This makes sense in terms of what side of bind we put return on or how we define the Kleisley composition, because we could have swapped the arguments. But nevertheless, they are still the identity laws. Venturing into the realm of categorical duality, let's look at the type signatures of return and join. As mentioned earlier, to construct their duals, we simply swap the source and the target. And we get two new functions. By looking at the type signature of the function from ma to a, we can think of it as the process of unwrapping extracting the value from the context. The function from ma to m of ma looks like we're wrapping our value with an additional layer of the given context. So let's give them the appropriate names, extract and duplicate. And so we define the comonad type class as follows. It accepts a type parameter w and contains the aforementioned functions. Fun fact, the comonadic type variable is commonly denoted with w because it's an m upside down. It feels like something is missing in the definition of the type class, though. Something crucial. What about the dual of the bind operator? If we flip the arguments, it becomes more apparent how else we can interpret bind. Essentially, given a Kleisley arrow from A to MB, we automatically acquire an arrow from MA to MB. This is where the dual of the Kleisley arrow comes in, that is, the co Kleisley arrow, a function from A wrapped in some context, usually a co monadic context, to B. Now we need to ask a question. Having a cole Kleisley arrow from wa to b, can we automatically get a function from wa to wb? We can indeed, though the context w needs to instantiate the Kolmonad type class, since the definition of our mystery function uses duplicate. This mystery function is called extend. And so we define the Kolmonad type class as follows. It accepts the type argument w, which has to instantiate functor, and contains three functions, extract, duplicate, and extend. Duplicate and extend can be defined in terms of each other. Extract is the dual of the monadic return, duplicate is the dual of the monadic join, and extend is kind of the dual of the monadic bind. There's also an operator form of extend, which looks kind of like bind, but the equal sign is at the front. Below that is the Kleisley composition, which can be defined either with extend or duplicate. Just like with the monad loss, there exist co-monad laws, which can be described with the co Kleisley composition. It has to be associative, and extract has to be its right and left identity element. 
Now, on to some examples. The table in front of you is split into two parts. To the left are the three classic monads, reader, writer, and state. Their type signatures are shown in the second column. To the right are the co-monads we're going to be tackling in a couple of minutes. env, traced, and store. Which are also called co-reader, co-writer, and co-state, respectively. It is important to clarify that the exact notion of duality here somewhat differs from the one stated at the beginning of the video and involves some pretty in-depth category theoretical stuff which we will not be covering today. Exhibit A, the env comonad. It is a simple product type. The type parameter E denotes the environment and A the value. In the instance, extract extracts the value and the result of extent retains the same environment, but its new value becomes the result of applying the function to the initial env. Let's look at the following example. Pause1d is a type synonym uh, of an env whose environment and value are both ints. This type represents a pair of the starting point and the current position. Start accepts an int and sets both the starting point and the current position to that int. Right and left adds the argument to and subtracts the argument from the current position respectively, returning the new position. Mod right moves the current position right and checks if the distance to the starting position is less than 10. If yes, then return the current position, otherwise jump back to the start. Now if we start at 3, go right 16 units, then go left 2 units, we arrive at 17. Then we go negative 1 units right and check if 16 minus the initial 3 is less than 10. It is not, so we jump back to the start, namely 3, and then go 6 additional units right, arriving at 9. Exhibit B, the traced comonad. It encapsulates a function from m to a, building up a result by prepending monoidal values to each other. Here's an observation. In the monad instance for the writer data type, we needed the type of the output accumulator to have the monoid instance. The same goes here for the type of the argument in the comonad instance. Why? Basically, extract accepts a function from ma to a and returns an a. At this stage, we don't have a value of the type m to have it passed to the function. But with the monoid instance, we can pass m empty. Moreover, duplicate accepts a function from m to a and returns a function from two values of the type m to a. But we need only one value of the type m. No worries, just m append those arguments. In this example, they're called m and m prime. And then pass the result to the function f. The next example will involve implementing the builder pattern with the traced comonad. The builder pattern is the creation of design pattern that allows construction of complex data, which is separated from the representation step by step. We'll construct a very simple builder pattern with the following prerequisites. Config is the data type containing the list of string flags. Config builder is a traced encapsulating a function from a list of flags to config. We're in good hands since the list is a monoid. The binary associative operation is the list concatenation and the neutral element is the empty list. Begin initiates the trivial traced where the function from the list of strings to config is simply the constructor make config. Optimize, profile, and heap all take a config builder and return a config. They add the flags negative O2, negative P, and negative H respectively to our list of flags. RTS takes a list of the flag builders and returns a flag builder. A pair of strings RTS plus and RTS minus delimits the flags enumerated by folding a list of the flag builders with the co claisley composition, the neutral element of which is extract, so that's convenient. Let's look at the example. We pass a list of two flag builders, profile and heap, to RTS, then add the optimize flag after which we invoke extract to finish off building our list of flags, and then we reverse the list of flags, since it was built in an opposite order. A task for you, should you accept it, is to find a simple way to have the correct order of the flags without the need to manually reverse the list. If you want to check out more examples covering other design patterns, as well as the code do notation, consider checking out the article written by Gabriela Gonzalez, link in the description. Exhibit C, the final one, the store comonad, which is effectively a composition of traced and env. S represents the constant stored value, and the function from S to A is the modifiable accessor function, mapping the stored value to the focus. Extract retrieves the focus by applying the accessor to the stored value, and extend modifies the accessor function without ever touching the stored value. 
Let's look at a couple of examples where store can be or is used. There's an interesting phrase that's been circulating in the optics community for a long time. And it goes like this. Lenses are the co-algebras for the co-state co-monad. Sounds scary at first, so let's dissect this phrase. First of all, we mentioned lenses. In this particular scenario, we mean primitive lenses. They can be interpreted as a product type, encapsulating two functions, a setter and a getter. Lens accepts two type variables. S is the source, and A is the view. In other words, it's a projection of the data in the source. The getter is simply a function from the source to the view, and a setter accepts the original source and constructs a new source with a modified view that is passed as the second parameter. Second of all, notice that the source is present as the first parameter of both functions in the pair. There exists a property called the universal property of the product, allowing us to sort of pull that parameter out of the pair the resulting function appears as s and returns a pair that looks precisely like store. That's where the co-state comonad part of the phrase comes in. Co-state comonad is just a fancy way to say store. The thing left to uncover is coalgebra. A coalgebra is a function from a type to that type wrapped in some context. We have a function from s to s wrapped in the context of the store data type, meaning that the lens type synonym is indeed a coalgebra for the store comonad. Our next and final example is inspired by Konrad Kleczkowski's implementation of Game of Life using store. The link to the article is in the description. We will build an elementary cellular automaton. It is a one-dimensional cellular automaton where each cell can have one of the two states, 0 or 1. And the state of the cell from the next generation depends on the state of the cell from the current generation, as well as its immediate neighbors. And the state of the cell from the next generation depends on the state of the cell from the current generation, as well as the states of its two immediate neighbors. In other words, the state of that cell depends on three values. Each value is either 0 or 1, therefore there are two cubed, or eight, possible configurations. A transition rule is a collection of those eight configurations. Since each configuration outputs a new state, there are a total of 2 to the power 8, or 256 transition rules. Let's quickly glance at an example of a transition rule. Rule 105. Its representation in binary is 01101001. Each place value represents the state of the new cell, obtained from the binary representation of its index, as shown in the table. Time to build our cellular automaton. Let's define the following type synonyms. Trans rule is a map from a list of bools to a bool, encoding a transition rule with, as we will see later, exactly eight configurations, and therefore eight key value pairs. Row is a store encapsulating an int coordinate and a function from int to bool, encoding access to the state of the cell given an int coordinate. Input coordinate retrieves the list of three coordinates, the given one, as well as the two neighbors. Input applies the accessor function from int to bool to every coordinate in the list. Input coordinate is defined via experiment, which works not only for the lists, but also for arbitrary functors. We pass our transition rule as an int, and then convert it to its binary representation modulo 2 to the power upper, using the function bin. In the end, we get a Boolean vector of length upper. For example, bin 3, 9 yields a list of false, false, true, or 0, 0, 1, or 1, which is 9 modulo 2 cubed. From rule and from configuration, calculate the binary representation modulo 2 to the power 8 and 2 cubed, respectively. Rule constructs a set of eight configurations needed to create a, the new generation. First, it calculates the binary representation of our past rule modulo to the power eight, zips it with the list of indices, running from seven to zero, and then calculates its binary representation modulo two cubed. The resulting list of pairs is passed to from list, constructing a map. Next cell retrieves the state of the cell from the next generation by looking up the value in the map, given a key the states of the current cell and its two neighbors. Given that next cell creates only one new cell based on the three cells above, we need to extend the functionality to the entire row. That's where next generation comes into play. By composing next cell with extend, we now retrieve not just a Boolean state of the next cell, but the new generation in its entirety. Generations returns an infinite list of all the rows given the transition rule and the zeroth generation. Now, how do we construct the zeroth row? We can do so with the use of the initial vector. We can set the stored index to zero and the accessor function to return the Boolean value at position i or false if we're out of bounds. 
Another question that might arise, given a row, how do we obtain the actual states of these cells? The answer is using experiment and passing the list of indices. To the right are the first 16 generations of the rendered rule 90 that creates a structure reminiscent to the Sierpinski triangle. Let's talk about transformers. Previously we had monad transformers, the data types that accept a monad as a parameter and return a monad, possibly introducing a modification to the behavior of the underlying monad. They can also instantiate a type class called monad trans, whose only function, lift, accepts the underlying monad and returns the constructed transformer. The dual of lift, if we reverse the arrow, is called lower, which obtains the underlying co-monad from the co-monad transformer. It is defined in the type class co-monad trans. But what is a co-monad transformer? Well, it models kind of the same idea. It is a data type that accepts a co-monad as a parameter and returns a co-monad, possibly modifying the behavior of the underlying co-monad. Before you are the co-monad transformer counterparts of env, traced, and store. An idea of abstracting over data types that define the specific behavior yields the creation of type classes that describe that behavior. For example, monad reader is the type class of all monads that can access some environment R or modify it locally. Monad state is the type class of all monads that support a mutable state S that can be retrieved, set, modified, etc. Let's look at the definitions of the co-monad type classes. The first one is co-monad env the type class of all co-monads which support a global environment that can be modified. The access to the environment is encoded within the type signature of the function ask. The base instance is co-monad env of the env transformer. The difference between the regular env and its transformer version is that the value is wrapped in the context. Next we have co-monad traced, the type class of all co-monads that support access to the value that depends on the monoidal argument. The base instance is commonad traced of the traced transformer. The difference between the regular traced and the transformer version is that the entire function is wrapped in the context. Lastly, commonad store is a big type class of all commonads that support both the information about the current stored value via pause and the ability to retrieve the focus by applying the accessor to a different stored value via peak. In a sense, it's a combination of commonad env and commonad traced. Pause and peak constitute the minimal complete definition, and the rest of the functions can be defined in terms of them. Peaks applies the function to the current stored value and passes it to peak. Seek sets the new stored value, and seeks modifies the current one. Experiment, as seen previously, applies the functor valued function to the stored value and then fmaps the possibly altered stored value wrapped in the functor context with peak. The base instance is commonad store of the store transformer. Since it's the composition of traced and env, the difference between the regular store and its transformer counterpart is that the accessor function is wrapped in the context. Let's go through the meaning of each function once again. Pause, retrieve the stored value. Peak, apply the accessor to the different stored value. Peaks, apply the accessor to the modified stored value. Seek, set the new stored value. Seeks modify the stored value. The experiment fmap the accessor function to the stored value passed to the functor valued function. In conclusion, we have built the definition of the comonad type class kind of from the ground up. By explicitly introducing the notion of categorical duality and applying it to the functions of the monad type class. First of all, by reversing the arrows in return and join, we obtained extract and duplicate. Second of all, by reversing the Kleisley arrow, we obtained extend from bind. Then we've introduced the co-monad loss in terms of the co kleisley composition, just as the monad laws are described by the Kleisley composition. Namely, we required the composition to be associative and extract to be its neutral element. We have looked at the examples of co-monads, env, traced, and store, as well as their use cases. And ultimately, we've touched upon the topic of co-monad transformers, We've defined the comonad trans type class that contains the only function lower, whose type signature is obtained by reversing the arrow in the monad trans's lift. Looked at the transformer counterparts of env, traced, and store. Abstracted over these data types by defining the comonad type classes that describe the functionality of the respective data types. Thanks for watching. If you happen to have gained something useful out of this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more videos like that, consider subscribing to the channel.